Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today we're going to have a look at what's in this huge box. Though I guess with nothing else in the picture for comparison it doesn't really look all that big. Anyway, as you can see, this is the limited edition ammo 16th scale Panzer 1A Breda, if I'm saying that right, probably not. I'm sure somebody knows and will correct me in the comments below. This kit was somewhat recently released and I figured why not pick it up. This kit is based on a slightly earlier regular Panzer 1 kit by Tacom. Ammo doesn't make the plastic themselves, Tacom do. I believe the main difference between that Tacom kit and this one is the turret, gun, markings and obviously the box art. Which is obviously intended to celebrate the 100th anniversary of De La Legion Española. Probably enough waffling already. Let's have a look at what's in the box here. Unsurprisingly, lots of plastic. First we have this hull tub. This is a pretty big piece, obviously, it is a 16th scale model. The small size of Panzer 1 does make this a small 16th scale model, and that is going to be part of the appeal for some people with small spaces, like myself. The detail on this part is pretty good. In this scale there's going to be more detail in things like bolts than you would see in smaller scales, which is, well, obvious, but I think it's pretty cool. It's probably worth mentioning that this is my first 16th scale kit. I do already have an RCT3485 in this scale, but that's pre-assembled and it's not really the same thing. The turret is also pretty good looking. I like the weld seam around it. That's pretty convincing. Same with these bolts. They look like they have screw heads, which I suppose is to make them flush with the plates. These details should make it pretty fun when it comes time to weather this model. The next individual sprueless parts is this engine deck. Well, I guess it's sprueless if you don't count that bit of sprue in the central opening. It's a pretty simple part, and most of the detail will come later. Same as the turret, really. But it looks pretty neat and tidy. So far I haven't seen any defects or blemishes. Now for the sprues, in random order. Let's start with sprue C. This holds a bunch of big chonky parts, like the front and upper part of the hull, and some turrety bits. Just like the previous parts, these are very nicely moulded and, as best I can tell, free from any defects or damage. There's a lot of good bolt, rivet and weld detail, which really shouldn't be a surprise. These kinds of things seem like they would be a lot easier to represent in a large scale like this than the smaller ones I usually build. I don't think that means I shouldn't mention that I think it looks cool though. It does. This next sprue, sprue F, is a bit smaller. But all of the things I said about the previous one still stand. Well, maybe not what's on it. This one mostly seems to contain turret and gun parts. I didn't really show it, but some of these parts, the gun parts, are slide moulded. So the gun barrel has an opening in it and won't need any drilling. At this scale that's not really a surprise, but it's nice to not have to drill. In these pictures you can tell because the sprue frame raises up over where the slide mould part would be. There are two of these A sprues. A for a lot of wheelie bits. Again, there's a lot of great detail here, including lettering on the return rollers. A lot of these parts would be super fiddly on smaller scale kits, but looking at this stuff, I think it would be great for a clumsy oaf with fat fingers like myself. I'm not trying to say that the large size is a bad thing, quite the opposite in fact, but it occurs to me that this might be a very good scale for people with limited movement or other issues that make modelling harder. I guess I'm just thinking out loud here really. There's a bunch of other small odds and ends here, relatively small anyway. There's a pair of machine guns on the end of this sprue, and my only issue with these is that they could easily be broken off the sprue. Probably not super likely, but there's not a lot to protect them. They look pretty good anyway. I think this sprue has the most delicate details of the entire model, like those, I guess they're lamps, with their very thin wiry mounts and cables. Granted they aren't that small, but I would still be careful with them all the same. The rest of the parts, while also looking good, don't seem that fragile. I'm not going to go through and talk about what each part is, largely because I don't know, but you can see them all, and that's probably good enough. And you can use your own mind and opinion to determine whether or not you like them. I think the size of these things, like the shovel and wire cutters, should lead to doing some interesting paintwork and weathering effects. Here's another two sprue set, the letter B, full of angry angry bees. Okay, that is clearly a lie, there are no bees. This is mostly a bunch of suspension gear by the look of things. 
There's a couple of doors and vision slots as well for good measure. I rather like the track tensioning parts here. You can see the thread detail and the bolts are nice and clearly hexagonal or octagonal or whatever they are. They're very well defined and I think it looks great. This would absolutely be greatly simplified at smaller scales and while there's nothing wrong with that, it is nice to see it in such crisp detail. The D sprue seems to be mostly hull plates, though there's some suspension parts here as well. And these, I guess they're exhaust pipes with the interesting ribbing look, well, interesting. Like all of the other parts, there's a lot of nice detail here that should make painting and particularly weathering this a lot of fun. This isn't my first TACOM kit and I do expect good things from a TACOM kit, though this is my first model in this scale as I probably mentioned earlier. So it's kind of something new and I'm very excited to start working on it. Something I'm not actually super excited about though is this pile of sprues with a whole ton of individual track links. Surely at this scale they're probably not all that fiddly and they do look quite good, but I would wager that it's still going to take a ton of work to get these done. I guess you could look at it as though you're getting more modelling time for your money, and that is kind of true, so I guess that's the way I am going to look at it. And I'm sure they're going to look awesome when they're done. I haven't actually read through the instructions, but I am assuming that these sprues are track pins. That's what they look like anyway. Photo etch and a brass cable are also included, and to be honest, I was expecting there to be a bit more photo etch than a couple of exhaust covers. Not that I think that's a problem, because photo etch can be kind of annoying. These look like they should be pretty easy to bend and put into place. I guess more than anything I'm revealing that old Herbert doesn't really read much about kits before buying them, otherwise I probably would have known what photo etch to expect. Oh well, opening the box and finding out what's inside and how it builds up for myself is a part of the hobby that I really enjoy. The last piece of plastic in this kit is the lenses for the lamps. There's not really much to say about these, they look good. They're clear, and they should probably be left off the model until after painting. Very good. Moving on, decals. Which, as you can see here, are certainly included with the kit. I don't know a whole lot about Spanish Civil War markings, or the Spanish Civil War at all really, but these look pretty good. And I'm under the impression that there are sufficient markings here for all of the painting suggestions the instructions have. They look to be good quality and I'm not anticipating any problems with them. And speaking of instructions, here they are. This is a pretty good booklet in my opinion. At the time of writing and recording, I haven't actually read all of this stuff, but there's a bunch of information about the vehicle, reference pictures, of which there weren't many, and things like that, which I think is really cool. I think this booklet is definitely worth keeping, so I'm going to try and look after it when I build this kit. There are of course instructions in here too. That would indeed be a very silly thing to omit. These seem pretty clear and easy to understand and follow. Obviously I haven't built the kit yet so that might not be the case, so keep an eye out for the build video, in which I'll let you know of any issues I encounter. There's also some painting tips, weathering recommendations, and a decal placement guide. Though not actually how to place them on this particular model, just how to decal. Some people might find this stuff handy and some obviously won't, but it's definitely not a bad thing for them to include. Obviously these talk a lot about using ammo by MIG products, which does make sense. There's nothing to say that you have to use their products though if you don't want to. There are four painting guides in the back of this booklet with their specific markings and such. I think this is pretty cool and I suspect a fair bit of research went into this. Of course for the actual painting and weathering these are very basic as guides, but I think they do make good starting points. Again, ammo paints are suggested, but you can always use any paint you like. On the back of the instruction booklet we find this, a print of the Spanish Legion's first recruitment poster from 1920. Pretty interesting. I can't read what it says of course, but it's still cool. I think it would have been cooler if they'd included this as a separate print that you could put on your wall or something, but it's a nice inclusion anyway. And that's what's in this box. Obviously I haven't built the model yet or I would tell you to go and watch the build video, but eventually it will be built and you'll be able to find a link to that down in the description below somewhere. I will begin building this live on stream soon. Not right away because I do have some other projects I'm working on, but soon. So if you're interested in that, head on over to twitch.tv slash herbert underscore or follow the convenient link in the description below and give me a follow. 
Keep an eye out for when I start working on this, or if you want to be really cool, watch some of the other models I'm working on or games I'm playing. It'll be fun times. If that doesn't interest you, that's fine. You can wait for the build video or just go and do your own thing. I'm not your mother. But before you go, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video with your friends, enemies, and anybody you think might get something out of it. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.